Timmins James Bay. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Very honoured to rise on behalf of the people of Timmins James Bay, and I will be sharing my time with the member for Vancouver Kingsway. There's uh, been incredibly beautiful weather here in Ontario this week, and I see people out on the streets wanting to believe that this nightmare is over. Um, certainly when I was in the market the other night, I saw many young people doing what young people do, hanging out and talking, uh, believing that with the leaving of winter, so we have left behind uh, the nightmare of COVID, but that is not the case. We know that there's some very concerning new variants out. Uh, the B117 variant is spreading quickly across Canada. We're seeing it in multiple new cases, and the health organizations are telling us that this is putting us right now in the beginning of a third wave. The crisis of new variants hitting us, virulent variants hitting uh, communities across this country, happens as we're struggling to get the vaccine rollout. This is a race against time. Uh, the United Kingdom has 44 doses administered per 100 people. The United States, 37 doses per 100 people. Canada is down still at 10 doses administered per 100 people. These are about decisions that were made and decisions that are being made. And I know my honourable colleagues and the Conservatives are talking this morning about when are they going to open the border. Um, I mean, on the weekend they said they didn't believe in climate change. Maybe they don't believe in, uh, in, in, the, in the new variants and we should open the border. We can't open the border till we get the issue of the vaccines dealt with. And the issue of the vaccines, of course, comes down to the decision that was made by this government to trust that the private sector was going to get them through. The Americans made the decision to invest heavily in the vaccine uh, production and research. Uh, we didn't do that, and it's put us in a situation uh, where we're, we are behind, and we are behind at a time when we can't afford it because of these variants. These issues of, of reopening the economy is incredibly important because we know it has caused massive damage to small businesses across this country and personal economies. But we need to look at how the lack of rights that exist for many workers has actually exacerbated the crisis. Right now in Peel, we have a situation where we found 600 cases of COVID at the Amazon warehouse. 600 cases. Now, this isn't a flu we're talking about. COVID has proven that it can have long-term neurological and health damages to people. And yet Amazon allowed 600 of its workers to get sick in that plant. Uh, it's, a, it's a number that I don't think has been as staggering as anywhere except at the Cargill plant in Hay River, where there was also about 600 cases. These are families who are affected in Peel, which is in the red zone continually. Uh, you heard Doug Ford make it seem like that the people in Peel were out partying or something and not listening to the rules. The reason Peel had such high rates is so many of those are precarious workers and had to work in warehouses like Amazon where they had no choice but to go to work. So if we're going to talk about getting the economy reopened, we have to talk about protecting the workers who have been on the front lines, who can't take a day off if they feel sick who actually, we've, we've got evidence of people who can't even go and get a vaccine because they can't afford a day off of work. That's how precarious they are. And we have in Ontario, 15,000 people have gotten sick from COVID because of workplace exposures. So there needs to be a coherence of saying, to get the economy back on track, we have to shut this COVID spread in workplaces down and by doing that we have to have basic rights of people to have their workplace safe and that if they need time off for being sick that they are taking that time off so that they're not making other people sick. I think the issue of Amazon is something to, to look at because Amazon is the symbol of everything that is wrong in the modern globalized economy. This is a company with 21st century style technology and 19th century style labor practices. The abuses of workers at Amazon have been documented again and again and again. And yet when the Prime Minister, remember when all the Liberals were talking about Team Canada and all hands on deck and we were all in this together, at that moment the Prime Minister shocked the country when he came out and said who would be the partners for distributing medical uh, equipment? 
not Canada Post, not Perlator, places that had um, unions and places that have good work conditions. No, we were going to partner with Jeff Bezos, one of the crummiest human beings on the planet, and make them our partners. So what the, just, what the Prime Minister effectively did was he privatized and outsourced a key element of the pandemic response to Amazon. Now, it's not just that Amazon is a crappy company in the way they treat their workers, but while our small businesses were going down in flames across this country, Amazon literally was making out like bandits. And why was that? Well, Amazon doesn't pay taxes the way small businesses pay taxes. Now, you would have thought the Prime Minister would have said, what a symbol it is to be standing beside small businesses across the country or Jeff Bezos that has this massive tax loophole that has allowed him uh, to become billions richer. And so the two of the worst companies in terms of the profits they made were Amazon and Walmart, $116 billion richer. And Amazon and Walmart, by the way, were also two of the companies that gave the least to their employees. There are many big, big corporations who actually said, hey, our employees are keeping us profitable. Our employees are going to get a better share. Costco, certainly, a big, big player, gave a fair share, but not Amazon and not Walmart. And why do I mention that? Well, because we know that Walmart stayed open through the whole pandemic while all our little small town stores and businesses were hanging by a thread and begging for loans because they had to be shut. So it's that inequity. And it's about the choice that this Prime Minister made to tie himself to Amazon, of all companies, because of the abuse of their workers, the high injury rates, the fact that we knew they weren't going to protect their workers in COVID. And we saw Tim Bray, the Vice President of Amazon, who quit over the firing of workers in the United States. The Vice President of Amazon quit because workers were fired for asking, in a pandemic, to expand sick leave, hazard pay, and child care for the warehouse workers who were trying to keep their business afloat during the pandemic. The child care, of course, was huge because in the first wave, we know when families, their children had to stay home, and yet workers had to go into work because there was no support for them. So this was the prime minister deciding that Amazon was the symbol of what was going to make the liberal government look good. Uh, in the pandemic. It sent, I think, a very wrong message. So what do we need to do? We need to work together at this point to get uh, us through this third variant. I encourage people across this country, do not, at this point, do not let your guard down. This is the most dangerous point. We've come through two waves, this third wave. We do not want to have us hit again. We need this government to have a plan on the vaccine rollout. And they've been hiding again and again and again behind provincial jurisdiction. But we saw in the United States how they brought the army in, how they had a national strategy to get the vaccines out. And we have a prime minister who's Mr. Laissez-Faire. And no offense to the provinces, but come on. Doug Ford failed the people of Ontario time and time again, not spending the money he should have spent. Jason Kenney. Uh, when everyone else in Alberta was doing their part, his uh, MLAs were on the beaches in, uh, in Mexico, in Hawaii, and now he's using his $30 million war room to pick a fight over the historical accuracy of a cartoon about Bigfoot. That is what Jason Kenney thinks is the biggest priority now, that a, a cartoon about Bigfoot is somehow inaccurate? I know there are a lot of Bigfoots who probably do support Jason Kenney. But why am I mentioning him and Doug Ford? Is because we cannot simply leave something as big as a pandemic to them if that's what their priority is. We need leadership from the federal government. We're not seeing it. We need a commitment at the federal level where we have 180,000 employees to have the labor code say that workers will be able to take time off for sick leave. That is a simple change the Liberal government could make now. If they did that, it would keep people safe. It would get the economy back up and rolling because we know that if people can take time off when they're sick, they're not going to make other people sick and it's going to save us in the long term. So I'm encouraging my Liberal colleagues and my Conservative colleagues to push for the simple change that we can do at the federal level to make sure that the 
workers who need to take time off, and we have uh, hundreds of thousands of them in, under federal uh, jurisdiction, can actually get the time off so that they are not spreading COVID or any of its variants. Thank you. Madam Speaker, I'm here all day. Questions come on.